And when people are, these entrepreneurs are pitching you the deal, you know, and what we say at Rich Dad, the product is not the most important thing. It's more important the person and the business behind the product. So when you're looking at this person pitching in the deal, what's going through your head? Well, there's three things I'm looking for because after 10 years and thousands of pitches, I've learned that there's three attributes present in a pitch that's going to get financed. It doesn't necessarily determine the outcome of the business. There's other elements to that, but you, you'll see these three, and if these are the most important. Can the person explain the opportunity in 60 seconds or less? Because if it's a really good idea, it doesn't take a long time to explain what it is. And number two is, can they explain why they're the right person to ex execute on the business plan? Because I much prefer to invest in the jockey than the horse. If the horse is the idea, that's great, but I want someone who can actually execute it. A great idea with someone who can't do the execution is useless. So those two things are very important. And, and, how, and Kevin, how, how, for the person, for the, the, what do you look for in the person? Why, why, what, what makes well, them a good did, jockey? Where, where did they come from? Why do they know something about this business? Did they work as an apprentice in the industry? Did they work for a competitor? Is it part of a family business they're involved in? Did they try it once before and fail and now learn from their mistakes? Those are all the kinds of things I'm listening to because I can hear a great idea and find a better manager all day long, but they have to prove to me that they're the right person to manage the business. And then lastly, and this is the killer, I've heard terrific ideas with great executional skills, but when I ask them about numbers, they don't know anything. So if you don't know your numbers, you deserve to burn in hell in perpetuity if you've got <laughs> me going on the first two. And I'll personally put you there because, you know, you have to understand the size of the market, how fast it's growing, how many competitors there are, what the gross margins are, all of that stuff. That's the language of business. And if you don't understand it, find somebody who does. Those are very, very important elements. So if you get those three together, you can start to assess what the probability of success is, and that's what matters the most. The DNA of a business hasn't changed in a thousand years since the Romans were trading blue dye. Number one is you have to care about your customers. Number two, you have to care about your employees. And number three, you have to care about your investors. And when you try and contort a business to start caring about something else other than that, you end up failing. There's nothing wrong with being socially responsible. The way you do that is you provide profits to your shareholders who then take them and give to any charity they want. But if all of a sudden you try and contort your business to be a charity, it's not going to be a business anymore. Who are you serving? Because if you're not serving your customers, they go away. If you're not taking care of your employees, they won't work for you. And if you don't give your money back to investors because they took a chance on you and they want it and they put money in harm's way and they expect a return, they won't provide any more dollars for you to build your business with. So all of a sudden you tell me you want to save every baby whale off the coast of Florida. That's not what the business was for. You can save baby whales after you've made money for your shareholders. You can spend your profits and your portion of the dividends any way you wish. But your job in leading business is to make sure that it works and it's profitable and it's successful. You can't solve everybody's problems with your business. You have to solve your customers' problems. And that's a very good debate to have because some people say, well, if you're socially responsible, it's a form of marketing and it makes people feel better about your products. That all makes sense, but you should recognize that charity you're providing is actually expense your business, and if you're gonna call it marketing, it better have a return. It better get you more customers. And I think a lot of people are very confused about this. You have these young people coming up, probably 25 to 30. They just graduated from B school, from Harvard or Stanford. They have all the jargon. They can speak the language. They know the words, but is it my hallucination or what? I noticed that the whole panel of sharks go a little crazy when they're talking about things they learned in business school, but they have no real world experience of it. Is that your experience? They, you can tell a person. Yeah, I, I mean, the, sh the sharks are all self-made millionaires and billionaires. I mean, so they've done it. They've run their own businesses and they all came from different sectors of the economy in different states and so it's a tremendous amount of diversity there but they all have one thing in common they were once entrepreneurs that worked very hard to achieve success and so when somebody comes in with all their bs and all this the jargon and everything and they've never run a business or made any money for anybody including themselves we don't put any weight on that i mean you you can't 
BS your way through a Shark Tank presentation because the sharks are smart. They've been there. They've already done it. And they know when they're being BS. And so it gets very bad for you. And you've seen it happen many times. When we get to a point where we can't get the truth out of somebody, you know, that's that's when they're done. And that's when it gets nasty. And, and I personally don't want to waste any more of my time. I'm there to make investments. And when I know with certainty I'm not going to put any money into that person, I want them to go back out the door. I don't want to see them again. As I like to say, they're dead to me. And I want to see somebody else now.